they're going to have a, a bit of a trouble there because uh, during the time uh, when they opened up, well, all the, all the hills around here, all the bush wasn't clean. Well, today's all clean now, and then the water, when he rains, the water comes straight down from the hill. And uh, this, this river here gets flooded up in oh, within 12 hours. The water come down from the hill and, and the river rise. The hills are the high rainfall areas of the Coromandel and Kaimai ranges. And the river is the slow-moving Waiho, which flows across the Hauraki Plains to discharge in the Firth of Thames. But this peaceful-looking river is so flood-prone that the Soil Conservation and Rivers Control Council considers it to be one of New Zealand's most dangerous. The government therefore declared that the work scheme here is of national importance. However, this takes away the landholders' right to vote on a loan poll on whether or not they want to pay for flood protection. So they lose a democratic right because it's of benefit to the majority. In recent years, there have been two major floods here with results like this. Farmers have lost months of production because of ruined pasture and destroyed stock. And each year, the flood danger on the Waiho gets higher. So high, in fact, that the local catchment authority refused to take responsibility for the lives of the people in the valley unless the government approved an entirely new scheme. A farmer's wife, Mrs. Mould, remembers the last flood. Oh, don't talk about that. That was the biggest heartbreak. I think a fire, any day, is better. It's a clean sweep. They picked up the linos and they just fell apart. And carpets, likewise, they were all ruined, clothing. And the stench, you see, you don't only get the dirty water from the river. You also get the sewerage from the homes and the cow sheds. And all this goes through. Water was just running through these windows. During that flood of 1960, the Ohinemuri River, a tributary of the Waiho, came to within inches of the planking on the Criterion Bridge at Pyroa. And if the stop bank here had given way, there would have been a four-foot wave down the main street. Roger Harris, catchment board engineer. Well, it's hard to explain it exactly but I would say that a failure of a 17-foot high stop bank with a big flooded river behind it is just the same as a dam bursting. And failures have occurred. One occurred in 1960, but fortunately was in daylight and minimized the results. And the fear here is that a failure will occur in the dark hours, say at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, inundating a large area quickly. Because of the vulnerable position of Pyroa, and the obvious danger to the lives of the locals, the vast river control plan known as the Waiho Valley Scheme was approved by the government in 1969. Local newspaperman Graham Watton talks about the attitude at the time to the news. The attitude in Poirot has been one of, well, almost complete apathy. I think this is mainly because the people realise the scheme's got to go through, it's got to be done for the protection of the town, but mainly, I think, they don't realise the tremendous size of the scheme and what it's going to cost. The scheme is enormous and expensive, but fairly simple in principle. It is unusual only because it involves the whole catchment. On the steep hillsides, the accepted conservation practices will be used, the noxious animals will be controlled, and trees planted to stop erosion by the tributary streams. On the main stream, the overgrown willows will be removed to speed up the water flow. But most of the money is to be spent on the last 40 miles across the plains. Here, the whole stop bank system will be widened and in some places straightened. Altogether, an estimated $20 million will be spent by the Hauraki Catchment Board, who designed and presented the scheme for the council. Having the scheme accepted has not been a straightforward matter. The Hauraki Catchment Board has spent some time passing on their ideas to the many groups concerned and answering thousands of questions. ...over the uh, implementation of the Waihau Valley Scheme since it's been approved by government as a work of national importance and uh, since we have, uh, as you know, started work on it. Uh, the Madam One man who has reported the ups and downs of the scheme over the years is Peter Riley of the Tiaraha News. His editorials have supported the scheme and explained the technical and political background. 
and his paper has given a voice to the scheme's supporters and its critics. No, there's been some opposition from farmers and then of course the uh, local authorities in the broad territory, they didn't agree to start with, with some of them quite, uh, quite adamantly against the scheme being classified one of local and national importance. I can remember farmers saying that this just was not on, that they should, should not lose their right to vote on a lone poll. But then, of course, the catchment board will say that this will take so long to implement, and then once they do get past the initial steps, it will take so long to deal with the rights of appeal. The catchment board's line has been get the scheme underway and handle these through due processes of appeal and courts. Uh, after the classification for local, the local share. The elected chairman of the Hauraki Catchment Board is Jack Cookson. He's the front man for the farmers and the engineers. We interviewed the Minister of Works on two occasions. As a result of those interviews, I came to the conclusion that there would have to be a demonstration by people other than the Hauraki Catchment Board from within our Hauraki Catchment Board district uh, to government that they people in the district thought that this work was absolutely as essential as what we had told the Minister of Works that it was and Soil Council. Really catchment boards are really a coordinating authority uh, rather than a dictatorial authority in so much as we had to coordinate the, our own thoughts, the local farmers thoughts, the local municipalities and county councils thoughts, Soil Council's thoughts and convey these to government and get and coordinate their thoughts into one overall uh, total agreement for the scheme. Jack Cookson has a farm near Te Aroha, but these days he spends little time there. Why did he take on local politics and such a time-consuming and often thankless post? Uh, because of the fact that I had a farm that flooded and I was rather impatient at the progress that was being made by the Hauraki Catchment Board in implementing an overall river scheme. And because of this I stood for the Catchment Board and eventually got on. Uh, I would sincerely hope that I have a considerable amount of power, uh, but uh, it's a hard thing to, to gauge. Uh, but I would be optimistic enough to hope that I had considerable power, and I think that this has been demonstrated in our ability as a catchment board to uh, coordinate to one group of thinking all the local authorities and the farmers generally, the Ministry of Works and Government, that this work was of an urgent and very important nature. You've got to remember that there are many hundreds of farmers in the area that have owned farms and some people were more conversant with the problem, those living nearer to the river, than those living further away. And also some people are easier to convince about these subjects than others. The scheme is now generally accepted in the valley, but many farmers are not happy about who will pay for it. They didn't pay anything towards the old scheme built in 1920, so why change? Uh, under common law, we've got the perfect right to put our water in the, in the river. You can, nobody can stop it. No. And well, uh, you mentioned a little while ago about our river. It's uh, our water. It's not our water at all. It comes from up there. And uh, neither us nor you can control that. And under common law, you can't stop us from putting our water no, in the river. No, you've got to repair it. And what you're trying to do is to, to um, uh, rate us for the right of putting our water in the river. That's what the mouse do. Right, rate you for the right to... to put our water in the river. Not necessarily to put your water in the river, to protect it, protect your property from the overflow that will be when these mountain streams go mad. Now, when are we going to know what we've got to pay? For instance, if I go and say, well, now, how much am I going to pay per year? When are we going to know this? It'll be uh, two, perhaps three years. In the meantime, the government are paying the lot. The scheme affects thousands of people along 500 miles of waterways. Here near the mouth is Thames, and the townsfolk are concerned about the future of their railway bridge. Mayor Wallace Brunton. The railway bridge will have to be raised and it will uh, also have to be three times as long. And uh, the whole future of the railway will depend on increased cargo that is carried by the railway. We must increase this to prove to the railway authorities that it is necessary. A new bridge could cost up to a million dollars, and as Thames is the end of this branch line, 
There are fears the railways may decide to terminate the line on the other side of the river. Well, they haven't actually said that, but Thames absolutely depends on the railway for its living. With our heavy industries and without the railway, I don't know what would be happening in the future. Tiarohas Main Street is well above the river, but the economy of the town depends on the surrounding farms. The scheme is important to the townspeople, but the question of cost worries them. Mayor Henry Skidmore. Well, I wouldn't like to say, just at this point of time, uh, what the uh, overall cost would be. I really don't think that whatever the cost is, that we will get the equivalent in benefit. There's so much taken up in administration and what have you, and I'm a little concerned as to how much actual work will be done within our borough for which we have to pay for. A lot of the cost goes on land purchase. Many farms are being bought for the river widening work. The Hayward family was one of the first to be affected. How do they feel? Oh, well, everything they've worked for is sort of just gone. And um, going and starting somewhere else, it takes an awful lot to realise it's yours, still not theirs. I suppose put us back about 10 years or so. They said we could stop and fight. And we would probably hold up the scheme for about two years. But it could be taken through the Public Works Act. But uh, doing it, they told us to go out and look for another farm that was suitable to us. And that would advance us the money that they have offered for the farm for us to purchase another one. And uh, so that's what we did. And we're not satisfied with the price they've offered us. And so we're still negotiating. Well, we haven't, we're out of pocket through it. And, uh, well, for the amount that they've offered us, we've had to raise more money to buy in again. And, so, and we have less acreage than we had here. We've got less acreage. But yeah. uh, we did buy an established farm, which has made it a lot easier as far as uh, moving in and settling down. This house was the first to go, and many more farms have a red line through them. Until now, the farmers have owned the land to the centre of the river. But that strip of land takes on a new importance when it's the reason your house and farm are being taken. But sometimes the project doesn't want all the land. Hugh Hayward explains. Well, we could be better off than a lot of people who uh, across the other side of the river there where the farms are losing a few, losing only uh, 10 to 15, 20 acres, but leaving with close to uneconomical farms. Across the river, Des Johansson knows he will have to lose some land, but he can't find out how much and when. Oh, it does steam me up. Don't worry about that. Um, sitting on a, on a farm that you're not sure what's going to happen, you can't do permanent improvements, this type of thing, I mean, it's... Uh, it's a worry and, and uh, you can't go ahead. It'll affect me greatly because I believe there's 86 acres out of 135 that will be taken over by the river scheme. Um, having a mile or so of river flats um, and the bank being shifted back, of course, all this country inside the river area will be taken into the administration area of the catching board. The catching board, of course, are very evasive on what they're going to do. I believe there's a big area le are taking off the farm, the buildings, outbuildings and everything, but they're very evasive of what they tell you. They say that the actual scheme is not finished yet, and uh, in my opinion, I think this is wrong. Um, to be passed by Soil Conservation Council and then go be passed by the government ready for the major works to be done, I think this scheme was done before it ever reached Wellington. Basil Morrison is further downstream. How will land acquisition affect him? Well, it'll affect me the... Uh the extent that it'll take 22 acres off my farm and uh, it'll bring it down from 110 acres. It'll take 22 acres off that and brings me down to a unit which is very hard to borrow money on to the extent that anything under 100 acres is considered uneconomical today. Well, my production will have to go down, especially in the initial stages of the scheme, because I'll take uh, from the river back up to that bush there, 
which takes just over 22 acres. It'll be about 30 acres will go in that. Well, I can have that back in about five years' time when the scheme is completed. But in the meantime, I'll be without that land and I'll be hanging on to grim death <laughs> because I just won't be able to afford to buy more land and uh, I'll have, just have to cut production until I can get it back. It'll affect my income, I would say, at least $1,000 a year. National and local importance, once that went through, um, that is the end of it. We've got no say on it whatsoever. No vote or nothing. Do you feel you've lost a democratic right? Oh, yes, definitely. Yes, yes. We've, lost a, we've lost a right to vote on it. Because myself here, I don't flood. But it's a, it's a narrow outlook, because we must look ahead for another hundred years. But at the same time, uh, I'm at the point where my neighbour, he'll be left on the smallest in this block, 110. Neighbours, 120. Well, he loses 20 acres, which incidentally is my brother. Well, he's left with 100 acres. Well, that's a viable unit. The chap next door, uh, he'll be left with a viable unit. And neither of them want to shift. And I'm in the middle, and I'll have to either sell out, which I don't want to be, because this is my family. This is uh, our 100th year on this farm. And uh, you can't put that value on me. And it's the land which the scheme will protect by conservation and river control. The scheme is a long-term project, and the stock on the Hauraki Plains will be hearing machinery for quite a few years. And the authorities will be hearing comments and criticisms of their scheme for some time to come. The government declared the project of national importance, so that it's been able to get on with the scheme in the meantime, and leave land acquisition and rating problems to the courts. But the question remains, should the rights of the individual be upheld when he could jeopardise a public work considered vital to the community.